Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to day three of the TLC conference. And I'm excited to, uh, to be able to uh, host this. My name is Paul Schultz, and I'll be hosting this TLC session entitled Meet H5P, Interactive Content Creator for Canvas and Beyond. And uh, we are privileged to have uh, Dr. Dan uh, Tinnenau and Dr. Adam Guchmit uh, presenting this. And uh, I'm excited just to be able to learn more about this, uh, this new tool that uh, can be used in Canvas. And I will turn it over to uh, Dan. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Paul. And by the way, this is I'm starting to share my screen. Uh, knock, knock. Anyone want to say who's there? Who's there? FERPA. FERPA who? I'm sorry, unless you have a signed consent form, I can't answer that. All right, hopefully now you're seeing the, uh, the screen uh, with the outline of the presentation. And uh, you'll note here um, that you can access this page if you want to at any point at tinyurl.com slash TLC 2019 H5P. Um, so yeah, my name is, is Dan Tignano, formerly of the College of Liberal Arts, now with the, um, I believe, temporarily named Center for the Enhancement of the First Year Experience. Um, I, I think there's consideration of, of perhaps revising that name, but uh, that's uh, where it is as of right now. Um, if you know me, you know that I am a technology enthusiast. I really have a lot of enthusiasm for creating content uh, for our classes and you know, for, for other things I might want to do as well. I do have a background in, in uh, television and film production, um, but uh, over you know, the last decade or more have really focused much more on digital and multimedia production. Um, and uh, this is something that I enjoy finding um, new resources like H5P and sharing them with colleagues. So let's uh, start out by introducing uh, H5P, um, which you can sign up for a free account by going to h5p.org. You also have the option to go to h5p.com, which will uh, let you create a paid account there are not many really compelling reasons to create a paid account, except uh, you do get access to the LTI, to the plugin for Canvas, which would require you having a course where you would be free to, to add um, plugins, which I, I don't think would be the case. Um, so there's, there's probably no real reason to pay for the uh, paid version of, of H5P, unless you're creating a whole lot of content and need more storage space. So you can sign up for free. You can create any kind of content. You can integrate it into Canvas. You just wouldn't be able to have an H5P element in your composing window that would like call up your, your library of created content so that you could save yourself a couple steps in, in uh, putting it into an announcement or a discussion post or uh, something like that. So I encourage you to, if this looks interesting, to go and sign up for a free account at h5p.org. Uh, uh, now, when you sign up for an account, you, uh, and by the way, uh, some of this is, was covered yesterday in a great session by uh, Sarah Sonognini. Um, and she, thank you, Sarah, if you're, if you're with us for giving me a plug for this, for this presentation today. Um, and you know, I would echo what, what she said or, or, or indicated, which is that there's a lot of different content options in H5P, and it wouldn't be very efficient for me to go through and describe each of them in detail. So sign up for an account, go through them. I'm really fond for a simpler use of the accordion, which uh, you'll see an example of in, in one of the uh, pieces that you'll see in a few minutes. Um, column is is very, um, column is very useful. The course presentation, the interactive course presentation is very useful. You'll see examples of both of those. 
Uh, Sarah in her presentation yesterday did an interactive video, which is very useful. Um, and then if you scroll to the bottom, and I don't know if these are put up in like oldest to most recent, but I know that the two most recently added to H5P are the branching scenario and the virtual tour. Um, th those are both, especially the branching scenario, if you need to do any sort of simulation based training in the classroom where students make a decision, it's almost like a choose your own adventure type scenario uh, with the uh, branching uh, content. Uh, it might be something you want to take a look at. Uh, it's currently in beta, which means that the feature set may, may change uh, before it's locked into its final form. There are 26 different content types as of now. I think there were 24 when I first signed up for H5P. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I hope you'll check them out uh, and, and take more time to look at all the options that are uh, available to you. Um, and I'm, I do have the chat up on, on the window now, so I will try to keep an eye on it. I want to show you first an example of the uh, interactive presentation. Uh, I put this together really to demonstrate H5P. So uh, I, I put the most effort into the, the finish or the polish of slide one to show that you can put in a, a, a graphic background and make it dress it up a little bit. Uh, H5P is a product out of Norway. Um, so if you email during the day, you'll be waiting for a response from them overnight, as I learned pretty early on. It integrates really well with Canvas through embed codes, or as I said, through an LTI, uh, if you want that route. Um, and you can put together these great interactive, especially using the presentation and the column tool and, and the interactive video. Um, so if you would like to know more, it's, this is a quiz question. Obviously, no is the wrong answer here. Um, but whether you answer yes or no, you can go on to the next slide. Um, you have all those content options, um, and most of them are available to you in the interactive presentation. One of the ones I like, Accordion, is not because Accordion has an unpredictable vertical dimension to it, and these are set um, dimensions for these slides. So that's one option that you don't have available is the accordion. But most of the other content types are available and can be integrated into an interactive presentation. So I've got a video in here. This probably most of you have seen this at one time or another, the guy uh, demonstrating mind-blowing ideas. I'll, I'll uh, stop him and mute him there. Um, you saw the, the uh, uh, multiple choice, AB choice question on the previous screen. Uh, just a lot of options available to you. Um, and then again, you can, you can make anything on the screen clickable with an anchor. We'll take a, lo a look backstage in a moment. Um, you've got fill in the blank items. Um, imagine integrating comprehension checks in guidance, discussion posts or announcements. That would be great. Students will not only learn more, and let's get an answer wrong on purpose, but they will be more confused in the process. And I, I lost my answer button a little bit by doing something too long. So I learned something new about H5P just now. But see, obviously confused was the wrong answer. I can click on the I and see that engaged was what I was looking for. There's drag and drop. So you can drag and drop things uh, for like interactive photo matching. Um, and uh, this little note here, if you want to collect results from quizzes and, and gauge student comprehension, that is something you have to pay for. Even if you have a paid membership, you have to buy units of response, I guess you'd say, from H5P if you want to get uh, data back. Um, and, and it becomes quite affordable as you, get, as you pay for more responses, but uh, it's, not, it's not free to do that. So uh, just a word of caution there. Um, H5, H5P, the, the people who put it together are very active. I'm sure that they have more uh, products in the pipeline. Some of the most recent, the virtual tour, the branching scenario that I mentioned earlier, dictation, which can be benefit of benefit with accessibility issues. The advanced fill in the blanks, which uh, I, I think the one that I had in the previous slide was the advanced because you're able to 
have a number of acceptable responses for a particular blank. Um, image pairing and essay uh, were released 2018. And if that's not enough, one more slide, H5P is working on a kind of a content library that uh, the, I, the hub, which would be uh, both for sharing content free and for being able to buy content. Um, I'm not sure if it would be from H5P direct or from vendors, but let me jump over to edit and show you what it looks like when you go in and edit it. It looks really pretty similar. You see the same stuff, except now this is not a clickable link. Now I can, I can edit it. Um, and all of these things are now editable. I, I can navigate using the regular navigation controls or by clicking on the slide. The circle indicates that there is um, a response uh, expected from the, uh, the, the user at that point. So these slides one and three have a response item. Um, but you can go through and you can edit any of these items. You can add new slides. Um, but I, I, in the context of the time that we have available, I, I do not have enough time to, to do a tutorial on, on um, how to set all these things up. But I'm happy to, to um, work with people one-on-one -on -one, uh, by screen sharing later on if you're interested in H5P. I've even thought of the idea, Sarah, of um, putting together an H5P club maybe that could meet once a month and, and share projects and get advice from people. And I would certainly be, um, I certainly would be interested in setting that up. And I see Sarah, Sarah and Amy are both, are both on board already. So maybe we'll make that happen. Um, Matt, I don't know if I answered the, the question about mapping outcomes um, when I said that they expect you to pay for that, but you, but you can get data back if you're willing to do that. Um, so hopefully I answered that question with that, Matt. So this is the, the edit view, and then you can skip back to view. Um, I don't really need to save any changes because I didn't make any. An important thing you need to do uh, whenever you want to share your content is to publish it. Um, this is, I've made this public so that anyone in this session can access these resources. You won't be able to edit them because you have to have a login for the account that created it. Um, and Holly, I'll follow up with you by email about the cost, but it goes down to pennies per data point um, when you when you buy a lot of uh, a lot of. I think the starting cost is about forty bucks for the, the highest per response cost, smallest number. But I'll I'll um, I'll look into that and get back to you, Holly. And anyone else who's interested in that can can uh, email me about it. So remember to publish your content if you want to share it. Uh, this is something that I made that some of you may have seen already because I shared it out a little bit. Um, I've, I, since graduate school, I've been a huge fan of the War of the Worlds broadcast as probably the best found experiment in the field of communication, or certainly one of the, one of the two. Um, and um, so I put together this because I, I know a lot about it and I didn't have to take too long uh, to put it together. So we start with a headline from the day after uh, the radio play was on, an overview. And this is the accordion content where you click on the heading and it sort of slides things around until that box opens up. And if you want to go back and, and read this later, if, if you would like to, Again, I don't want to take the time to read through the content about the world, War of the Worlds in this H5P presentation. I've integrated a comprehension quiz, which of the following was presented as a possible reason people panicked, but not a likely one because it's anecdotal, had to do with people tuning out of a more popular program because an unpopular uh, musician came on, which of the following was likely to reduce the likelihood of believing in the invasion from Mars, uh, checking on other radio stations for similar news stories. People would check around um, and see that there was no invasion from Mars happening. Which of the following was not a major factor in creating the panic? A severe thunderstorm in the area with lightning flashes and sounds did not play a role. So knowing my stuff about the War of the Worlds, I got a three out of three. I've linked to the original broadcast, which is a great lights off on Halloween Eve uh, listening uh, treat, I would say. 
and a link to a 1975 movie, kind of a behind the scenes recreation of what went on that night with Orson Welles and, and uh, some of the people who, who made that. So, and again, if we, if we look behind the scenes here, the column, and that's column format, it looks completely different than the presentation. The presentation, you can recognize everything. The column is bricks of content that you order in sequence, and you can, you can reorder them by dragging. You can delete them. You can, you can add and edit to any of these panels. You can add a new panel at the end. There's a question set. I can add questions to it. I can delete questions. I can revise questions. It is a very, very adaptable, powerful content uh, tool. And it's the one that I feel has the most potential when you look at probably mostly um, creating guidance in this form, um, but also announcements, um, discussion icebreakers, and things like that. I would say um, Sarah might disagree with me because I know she's a big fan of the of the interactive video, but I would say um, you should you should look into a handful of these things first as being worth uh, most worth your time in developing skills, and that would be the the three that have come up in in Sarah's presentation and mine. That's the column, the um, interactive presentation, the interactive video. Now I'm going to turn things over to Adam. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and Adam's going to share his screen and talk about what might go into adapting uh, some guidance that already exists into H5P. Adam? Oops. There we go. All right. There I am. And let me see if I can get my screen shared here. <clears throat> Hopefully everyone is seeing uh, my screen now. Are we looking good? I think hopefully so. All right. I'll, uh, if someone will tell me if not, but anyways, uh, as Dan, Dan alluded to, uh, one of the, the uses that we have identified for, for H5P is to convert, uh, in a course's weekly guidance into the H5P format. So what I wanted to first, uh, do is kind of review quickly with you, uh, some of the established guidance that we have uh, created in our COM courses uh, using uh, a different technology, Adobe Spark. And this is something that uh, I've talked about uh, in past years at TLC and Dan has uh, talked about it as well. We've not only uh, individually, Dan and I created uh, these guidance, but we've also set it up so that it can be uh, standardized for our, for our COM courses. So uh, any of our uh, faculty members have the ability to use this uh, content uh, and post it into their uh, courses. So with the Adobe Spark, it's similar in that it is a columnar format for displaying the, the, the content. And what we wanted to do when we created these guidance was really uh, present the information that was being covered in the course uh, each week. Uh, that uh, was a little bit more dynamic than just simply text. So we wanted to incorporate a little bit more multimedia. So with our guidance, we now include uh, images. You can see here that uh, we establish what the, the uh, weekly objectives are and then go into discussing the key concepts for that week, excuse me, for that week along with some multimedia here where you're seeing the images. And then I also have included videos uh, when applicable uh, based on, on the topic. So that way students can watch these things, read through, and really, you know, with, with the guidance, the way we designed it was uh, so that our students really had a good sense of what they needed to do for those assignments and get some information that went beyond simply uh, what they were reading in the textbook to help them understand the, the, the concepts here. Uh, I dedicate a section specifically to reviewing what the assignments are that week and what they need to do, any additional reminders as well as references for, for the sources that uh, were mentioned through it. So we have this uh, each week for most of the, the communication courses. And now with H5P, it's a pretty easy transfer over. So if you're someone who has used uh, Adobe Spark or if you've created just simply within Canvas, uh, content that you use for your weekly guidance, it shouldn't be too difficult to move that over to H5P. So 
if I now go over, this is a, a, a portion of that week one guidance that I just reviewed now being displayed in H5P. The one sort of drawback is unfortunately right now from a kind of polished look, uh, the Adobe Spark is a little bit better than, than H5P. It's not quite as neat looking, uh, but that's about the only real drawback when it comes to H5P. Otherwise, it's much, it gives you so many more opportunities to not just simply plug in text and images and videos, but as Dan demonstrated, you can uh, have it be so much more interactive with multiple choice questions uh, or any sort of other uh, ways for, for students to not only be asked things related to the, the content that you're trying to teach, but also give them an opportunity to respond and talk about these things as well. So you can see here, I've once again just converted over the content that was in that week one guidance, but then I've begun to add some more dynamic elements like uh, asking multiple choice questions. So I've discussed, uh, for instance here, the idea of what happens when people become closer in relationship and the effect that has on uh, the perhaps the frequency of them being involved in a conflict. So that way uh, students have uh, the opportunity to uh, answer a question, check it, and then uh, they should, I think I need, I did not do this correctly, but you can have feedback be demonstrated. So when it's correct, you should be giving them obviously positive, uh, <laughs> <laughs> positive compliments rather than telling them to keep trying even though they've got it correct. Adam, I think yesterday was yesterday your first time using H5P? Yes. So really not too bad of a learning curve. Yeah, oh, no. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I just wanted this to was, point out in, in your defense that it was yesterday was your first. That's time. right, yeah. I, I'm, I'm no old pro at, at this, certainly. With that said, uh, that I can already identify where exactly I need to go to uh, correct that. And so it, it's not difficult to fix those things. And you have the ability to constantly re-edit and save uh, before you're, you're ready to publish this information and share it with your students or whoever is the, the audience uh, for this. So if I go into edit here, Dan showed you this uh, briefly, but I'll uh, once again show you that Basically, it's just those blocks and you keep adding whatever type of content you want, whether it is text, whether it is an image, and you just keep moving down and continuing to add those blocks of content based on what you want to add. And if I go back here, it was very easy for me to take the spark guidance and basically be like, okay, I begin with an image move that over. Then I've got a block of text, move that over and continue to, to build upon each. If I go down to the bottom here of the editing page, oops, hang on. You should be, and I think we had this issue when we did practice uh, earlier where, oh, okay, yeah, here we go. Uh, you should be able to see an add content button being displayed at the very bottom so that way you can continue to add more content along the way. Yeah, uh, this was the one thing we, we weren't quite sure what was the issue, but you should be able to see uh, add content uh, at the bottom here to continue adding on if you want to go further uh, with it here. So I got to figure out why from a display perspective, I'm not seeing that if it's because I've already published this or not, but you should be able to continue to add it. And when you're starting it fresh, you'll just be able to have that add content add content button down at the bottom uh, to be able to uh, allow yourself to add whatever you want. And as Dan showed you, you've got a dynamic list of different choices between text, video, pictures, questions, any sort of different type of option you want in order to make it uh, very interactive and educational for your students if you're creating something like this guidance. So that just kind of gives you one example of the way you can use it uh, with the uh, last couple of minutes here, I'll turn things back over to Dan before we uh, turn things over to formal Q&A. Uh, thank you, Adam. I'm going to um, 
Can you uh, stop sharing yeah, let so me... I can go back to, I don't think I can. All right, I'm gonna go back to this screen and go back to this screen. So um, in, in this document, if you hadn't worked with Adobe Spark before, um, there's a link to take you to Adobe Spark. It's free to use. There is an upsell, but the upsell really doesn't add much of value. Uh, sorry, Adobe. Um, and uh, there's an email link for me, an email link for Adam. And as I said to Adam earlier, as we were rehearsing this, I, I like to borrow a page from the Steve Jobs playbook and have one more thing at the end. Um, so a little thing I found recently is that uh, Amazon, through Amazon Web Services, has this, this thing called Poly, which does really high quality voice synthesis. So if you were wanting to do something that was narrated and you didn't want to record all the narrations yourself and worry about messing up and having to re-record it, uh, Amazon Poly is worth looking for. You can, there's no direct link because you have to be signed in. You have to Google Amazon Poly and it'll take you to the sign up page. The first year is free and you can use it a considerable amount for free. After your year is up, it costs $16 per million characters of speech generated using the neural engine, which um, you'll hear in a moment. That's about 200 single space pages. So you're not gonna, that, that $16 should last you a good long time. Here's something I generated earlier today to give you an idea. I hope you can hear it. Google Amazon Poly, sign up for Amazon Web Services, AWS, and use the neural engine to generate natural narration audio from text. I can even handle tough words, like the longest English word, new mono ultra microscopic silicovolcano coniosis. So that's my uh, one more thing, little, little not related, but maybe something you can use. Um, finally, before we open it up to questions, I would like to think this is this, uh, we changed the topic a little bit because of changes in the institution. The original team members, I want to be sure to thank them. Uh, Andrea Dilworth, Gabe Starika Jolivet, uh, Teresa Taylor Moore, and of course, uh, Adam for joining me today. And honestly, for too many things uh, to, to possibly list over the last six years. Uh, so thank you, Adam. And uh, thank you to the rest of the team if you're here uh, or not. Uh, and we can open things up for, for questions now. Um, I'll respond to Terry in the chat box. H5P <clears throat> is free to use in the .org um, world. The, I think it's $150 a year. The, that's at the academic price. It really is an academic product. It's intended as an academic product, so there's no uh, big discount there. But when you sign up for multi-user accounts, the price goes down until it gets to, I want to say, $50 per person when you've got 20 seats. Um, but it is free to use. Uh, you can create whatever content you want. Um, and then uh, it's just h5p.org. Um, or you can go to tiny URL. Oops. Um, tinyurl.com TLC 2019 H5P. And that will load uh, this page. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I'm happy to take questions that may come up later. I'm always happy to help uh, support people in creating their own content. Um, Amy and Sarah, if you want to, like, maybe we'll stay in touch and we'll form the core of an H5P club. I'd love to do that. I think it would be worth doing. Um, and um, you know, if, we, if we do that, we can, we can let people know through a general e email or, or something. So, um, for a minute, if anyone has a question. I've opened it so that people can unmute themselves if they want to ask a verbal question or type it in the chat.
Looks like that's it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank yeah. you everyone for your time and your attention. And mm -hmm. I hope to hear from a few of you about, about this really promising technology that we can maybe get a lot of mileage out of. Well, and, and I personally want to thank you, Dan and Adam, for uh, really kind of introducing uh, the exciting new technology that's out there and that will be available for us to create more, I think, engaging content for our students uh, here in 2019, going into 2020, and look forward to... Uh, you know, learning more about this. So again, thank you uh, to our presenters and thank you for all uh, of you for attending. Uh, there are other sessions for our TLC conference going on uh, here in the afternoon. So please consider joining us for those. And um, again, thank you, Dan and Adam. Have a great day.